To achieve cost reduction, simplified operations and scalability in the transport of IP and emerging Ethernet services, network operators need to migrate their optical transport technologies from the core segregation and deterministic multiplexing of the legacy TDM-based SONET SDH technology towards efficient aggregation, statistical multiplexing and QoS management of the connection-oriented packet transport technology. In this context, the packet transport technology that is best positioned as a solid alternative to SONET SDH is the MPLS transport profile. MPLS-TP is being jointly defined by the I2T and the IATF as a profile of the mpls te architecture addressing the design and extensions of MPLS functionalities and characteristics targeted at the transport networks. Thus, this technology aims at combining the packet experience of MPLS packet switching efficiency, traffic engineering and QoS with the operational experience of SONET SDH reliability, monitoring and link protection applied for IP transport services. The transport of Ethernet frames in MPLS CP networks is achieved through pseudo wires defined in the pseudo wire emulation edge to edge architecture which allows to offer emulated Ethernet services. One of the main differences between MPLS and MPLS TP is that the later allows physical separation of the control plane from the data plane. That is, no in-band control plane is needed. Thus, MPLS TP transport networks can be fully operated under either a management plane or an out-of-band control plane based on the GMPLS PC architecture. In this demo, we present a hybrid operated MPLS TP transport network where the setting up, release and control of both MPLS TP tunnels, that is PSC LSPs in the GMPLS terminology, and the pseudo wires are done in an automatic and coordinated way between the GMPLS PC control plane and the management plane. Specifically, the GMPLS PC control plane is used for the dynamic establishment on PLS TP tunnels and the management plane for the automatic establishment of pseudo wires. We have configured the GMPLS control MPLS TV pseudo wire nodes to follow the displayed network topology, which is configured through our application for the configuration of the adrenaline testbed at NetConf. The PC is co-located at PE2. Once the transport network is up, we proceed to quantitatively evaluate the average and the standard deviation of the setup delay and restoration delay when using either source routing or the PCE-based path computation. The GMPLS controlled MPLS TP pseudo wire nodes are deployed in a Linux PC platform with a dual processor architecture, as shown in the video. The nodes are equipped with either one or two quad-port Cooper Gigabit Ethernet PCI Express network interface cards and one or two optical 10 gigabit PCI Express network interface cards with an XFP transceiver port from Miricom and a DWDM tunable OTN XFP transceiver from Menara Networks. The logical architecture of the nodes is composed of two main elements, the GMPLS enabled connection controller and the MPLS TP pseudo wire label forwarding engine. The former is constituted by five GMPLS protocol agents, the local link resource manager, OSPFT routing, RSVPT signaling, and path computation, as well as the hardware abstraction layer to configure the MPLS TP forwarding engine. On the other hand, the implementation of the MPLS TP pseudo wire label forwarding engine is based on the Click Modular Router, which is an open source software for deploying flexible and configurable software routers. The video shows an example of an emulated Ethernet service for a point-to-point -point connection between two customer edges, CE1 and CE2. Provider edges 1 and 2, PE1 and PE2, are the ingress and egress MPLS TP nodes respectively. An attachment circuit is the physical or virtual circuit attaching a CE to a PE. For the Ethernet service, the attachment circuit is an Ethernet port. In order to dynamically provision the Ethernet service between PE1 and PE2, the management plane first requests the provisioning of a bidirectional MPLS TP tunnel to the GMPLS controller of the ingress PE, that is, a soft permanent connection. Upon reception of the provisioning request, the source nodes can either compute a shortest path using a modified extra algorithm, which only considers the T-links having sufficient unused bandwidth, or delegate the computation to the PCE. 
Once established, we can check connectivity between clients with the help of the ping application. In PCE-based path computation, after the initial PSEP handshake, that is, open and keep alive messages, the PE1 node sends a PSEP request and the PCE replies with the computed path. In any case, the computed route, PE1, P1 and PE2 in the example, is spaced to the signaling agent as the explicit route object. The subsequent signaling phase consists of a label request within an RSVP path message sent from the ingress to the egress PE, as well as a generalized label assignment, a bandwidth reservation, sent in RSVP REST message which travels backwards to the PE1 node. Once the MPLSTP tunnel is up, the ingress node notifies the management plane. Then, the management plane proceeds with the provisioning of pseudo wire, multiplexed over the established bidirectional MPLSTP tunnel. To this end, the management plane automatically configures a pseudo wire demultiplexer, a pseudo wire label, at both the ingress and egress PEs in order to map the emulated Ethernet service. Note that the management plane can perform a statistical multiplexing grooming of several pseudo wires into a single MPLSTP LSP. Once the Ethernet service has been provisioned, the function of PE1 is to forward the Ethernet frame towards PE2, where it is decapsulated and transmitted out on the attachment circuit. At the PEs, the Ethernet frames are processed, that is, stripping, regenerating the Ethernet preamble, frame check sequence, etc. Results show a setup delay around 67 milliseconds and 73 milliseconds when using source routing and PC-based path computation, respectively. Next, in order to validate the restoration function, loss of light failures are manually generated in the optical link between PE1 and P1. Failures are detected by the DWDM tunable OTN XFP transceiver at node P1 and reported back to the GMPLS connection controller. From the control plane signaling perspective, the node detecting a failure sends an RSVPT notify message to the ingress node with an error spec object indicating the failed link. The restoration procedure starts upon the reception of this message. In this example, we follow a break before make approach, that is, failed MPLSTP tunnels must be released before setting up the restoration ones. For this, PE1 sends a path tier message to release the failed MPLSTP tunnel and notifies the management plane. When the management plane receives the notification, it automatically deletes the associated pseudo wires by removing the configuration at PE1 and PE2 nodes. After sending the notification, the PE1 maps the failed link found in the notify message into an exclude route object in order to issue a new path computation request to find a feasible end-to-end -end path to PE2, excluding the link that failed. Once the restoration path has been computed, it is passed to the signaling for provisioning. And once the restoration LSP has been set up, PE1 notifies the management plane, which automatically starts the reconfiguration of the pseudo wires. Analyzing the sequence of pings, that is, ICMP request and reply messages, results show that a recovery delay ranges from 170 milliseconds to 216 milliseconds when using either source routing or PCE-based path computation, respectively. Here concludes the experimental demonstration of an hybrid-operated MPLSTP transport network for dynamic Ethernet service provisioning with restoration. This demo has been realized for the second year audit of the FP7 Strongest IP project. We thank you for your attention.